beautiful shot of our nation's capital tonight. We are just outside of Washington, D.C. We're at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, for this evening number three of the ACC and Big East Challenge. And, of course, the two clubs who are on deck right now in game number two of our doubleheader, number five and number six, the Duke Blue Devils and the Hoyas of Georgetown. Lots of fans from both schools, and particularly for the Hoyas, because this is their home court during the regular season, and they are here in mass. Also, the youngsters from Duke. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin, and welcome back to Landover for the second game of our doubleheader. I know it's going to be very hard to top what we had in that first game with the overtime win by St. John's over Georgetown. But in this one tonight, even more stars to unfold for you. Christian Leitner working inside for the Duke Blue Devils. And, of course, Alonzo Morning when you mention the Hoyas of Georgetown. And we'll see a lot of those two bumping bodies here in this game number two this evening. Bill Raftery is with me on the telecast to handle color. And right now, let's go to Bill for some behind the scenes and also the keys of what to look for in the second game. Well, Ron, here we are down in the boiler room where men are men. And the main object every day is to put out the pressure. And historically, in the basketball world, when you think of pressure, you think of John Thompson and Georgetown challenging every shot, getting every loose ball. And his two young guards are going to be tested. Joey Brown and Charles Harrison. Good performers, but they won't see this type of heat maybe the rest of the year. And of course, Duke at the other end has full court pressure. That ability to deny the inbounds pass, to trap, and then to have some help, and of course steal and finish the play. But of course, my roots are down here. My dad was a stationary engineer many years ago. His object every day was to put up the steam. Now, Ron, you and I are going to sit back with all those folks at home and see which team, Duke or Georgetown, puts up the steam. Well, these fans are ready to see with us who puts up the steam. Coming up, Georgetown and Duke from the Capitol Center. We'll be right back. the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. This place is rocking and rolling right now. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. First of all, for Georgetown, for the Hoyos. And, of course, the man that we mentioned off the top of the telecast, Alonzo Mourning, the 6'10", 240-pound junior. Chesapeake, Virginia, played at Indian River. And he is their go-to guy inside. And, of course, the head coach, 19th year at Georgetown, John Thompson, 426 wins. The lineups for the Duke Blue Devils. Leitner, their go-to guy at the inside. And, in fact, many times tonight, probably, we will see Leitner going up against Alonzo Morning. Coach is not necessarily wild about that, but they're going to have to do it. Coach K, 11th year at Duke, 236 wins. And, of course, three of the last four years, Duke has gone to the Final Four. Impressive. Of course, Michael is not feeling well. He had a touch of pneumonia the last couple of, I guess, 10 days to two weeks and struggling to regain his strength. We mentioned to him at the shoot-around today that he looks a little gaunt, his face very thin. And Mickey, his wife, was alongside with us, and she said he is lost. As you mentioned, mm -hmm. 10 to 15 pounds. Of course, sat in the bleachers at Cameron to watch practice and said it's a, it's a pretty good advantage. He's going to do it a little more. I started to say, from something like that, wouldn't it be amazing if a trend is set, not only with him, but among other coaches? Well, these two guys could set some trends, huh? Thompson yeah. and Krzyzewski? For sure. Well, now we'll get it squared away as the officials about to turn him in the opposite direction. Morning will jump it up for Georgetown against Laker. Tip is in the air. Matumbo comes up with the ball for Georgetown. And the Hoyas go on offense first. And a man. Almost stolen. Jumper no good. And a foul whistled inside against Georgetown over the top. Check it. McCaffrey charged with the violation. I thought they gave it to McCaffrey there, jumping over the top. They had a back out. 
Harrison now we're told has been called with the violation. Man to man. Great help here. Early cross courts it. Trying to get in this direction. McCaffrey with a jumper in and out. Morning skies for the rebound. Good shots up empty. They with the big fellows inside are really putting bodies on each other. Alega likes to mix it up, and you mentioned Morning, very physical player. He's out on Palmer now. It's Tombo really learning the game, though. McCaffrey misses inside. Bodies go fine, and the shot is good by Grant Hill. Now keep your eye on Hill, folks. He's a very smooth, fluid type of basketball player. Here he comes denying with the wrong hand. Morning. They got to walk before. Nice step in defensively. That's one fear when you play Duke. You've got to anticipate the step in, and this is the one as advertised. I think a lot of people came to see, particularly the pro scouts. Good help out by Leitner and the step up. They got the walk before. Crawford Palmer is the man who was standing there defensively. It was touched last by Georgetown. Well, we talk about Duke's pressure and the guards of Georgetown having to handle it. And of course, it's the other way, too. Georgetown can really go after people. Zone on the out of bounds. 1 3 1. Challenge every shot, Georgetown, or you don't play for John. three. Palmer got away with one. Palmer with a little push off inside that position and gets the jump hook to go down. Four to nothing Duke. I think anything he gives really makes Mike Krzyzewski feel pretty good about his club. He wanted to go bigger. That's why he put him in the lineup for Hill should be facing the basket. Everybody helps. Leitner comes down with the air ball. Remember, a junior, senior, and three freshmen on the floor for Georgetown. He likes the threes. He was begging for, from, from Hurley for the ball. Lather does like the outside shot and hits it very well. McCaffrey unlucky on the, the bounce, and he's 0 for 3. Oh, <laughs> what a kiss. They're going to wipe it out. We've got some speed on the floor right now, Rod. Right here, this is from our vantage point. You feel the contact, you know the whistle's coming. Throw it up, caress the glass. Probably had picked up the foul this morning. Puts Georgetown on the scoreboard, and it's four to two. We're about to hit 17 minutes to play in this opening hand. Now, Leitner was looking for some support, stood up, and let his man dribble around them. Palmer is going to be called for the foul. First foul on him. I pick and roll. Nice hedge. And now the recovery. And Palmer's just picked up his second. Do you think they ran the pick and roll in Zaire quite that well? He is learning the game. Opened up. Once you set that pick, of course, the defense hedges, and now his job. Hurley comes back to play the guard, and right away the reaction by Palmer late, but Mutombo, two big steps, and he's at the tip. You know, Billy, what's interesting about him, he is a senior. He's only played three years, and the reason for that is he speaks five languages, but the French was his primary, and the SAT is not in French. Mm -hmm. And because of that, in NCAA rules, he had to sit out his first year. So he was penalized for being fluent. For being too bright. Yeah. <laughs> and he's really awfully intelligent in his basketball ability as well. Lang has checked into the ball game. They throw a lot of wrinkles at you. Here's a little half court, one, two, one, one. And then back up into their, let's see, man-to-man, -man, straight up. Good shooter. 
Lang working inside as Lather hands the 15 footer. First two for Christian on the night, and it's six to three. Duke. Well, the bounce opens things up. You draw some defense and give it up. Good job by Laker in cutting the lane off there. Nice. Brown oh. trying to the hoop, but he makes it with the left. What upper body strength you need to hang and deliver that little baby hook. Let me, let me get somebody in the middle here, Dirk. Oh, overrun. Nice step in. Nice step in. Hill gave it up. And I'm sure he's run over a few guys in practice to learn. Georgetown sacrifice on defense as well. Not afraid to mix it up. Grant Hill charged with the violation. It's his first foul. 15-57 left in his opening half. Duke leading by one. For those who want 4x4 toughness and need family van practicality, Suzuki introduces... Welcome back. They did not take a timeout with us just now. Matumbo on the final dunked it. And Georgetown with their first lead by one. Traffic rebound. Now Thompson really after it. You think it's a little payback in his mind? Lose it in the NCAA a couple of years ago? 1989, these two teams against each other in the East Regional. Brown with the reach in. You saw Hill getting into the middle of things. It's interesting how they approach the offensive Duke. They overplay and then help out down in the back. And now, some coordination between the officials and the score. Georgetown has taken the lead by one. We'll take a break. Georgetown's doing a good job denying the ball down on the block area. But this shows his range. He wanted the three earlier, and Hurley didn't give it to him this time. They find him. 7-6, to six, Georgetown leads. Just over 15 minutes to play in this opening half. Now, Lang in the game, you saw that big rebound earlier. He really gets up, blocks a lot of shots as well. Exciting type player. Oh. He's got offense on his mind. He can fill it up. Finding himself as a sophomore. McCaffrey averaging almost 17 a game. Had missed those first three. Got to keep putting it up, and he did. Leitner and Morning really tee it off on one another. He'll, he'll give him that shot. Hill with the outlet pass to McCaffrey. Always look up. A little chippy hanging. John's been pretty open to talking about this youngster with the basketball here. Nice. Only a freshman, but he likes him, and a good reason why. That was a nice pass. Leitner will be called for the foul. Nothing easy for these two teams. You're not going to get an easy layup without somebody coming flying at you. Somebody's going to pay somehow. And you're right. I'm impressed, as John is, with Brown. He's running the club, getting the ball inside. This Georgetown team has two people that can be so damaging down low. The key is to get them cutting and in position, and then the guards delivering the basketball to them. And occasionally, they'll play in the middle of the floor without the big guys. That coach has been quoted as saying is that Brown has picked up the Thompson offense so quickly it also shows lots of maturity for only being a freshman. John has a way of getting him to pay attention quickly. Wouldn't you? <laughs> the Tumbo knocks that first one down. It's a two-point ball game. Loses the ball and morning inside with the stuff. That's the hardest stuff. Flat foot it under the tin and then sending it in. Lang should have just squeezed that ball. Straight up man, really harassed the ball handler. Everybody helping. Good job. Really fine defense. Cut off the passing lanes, forced it back outside. And you see how subdued Mike is, really. He, he doesn't have the energy to really go after his guys. It'll come. He has that weak off, I think, for exams, which will be a great help for him. You forget how something like pneumonia, I said, you forget most people have never had it. Mm -hmm. But he said he really was drained after the ball game the other night. Not there. There's the strength. Yes! 
he is after maybe some messages to deliver. Six points and three rebounds for morning in the early going of this one. Thomas Hill, number 12 in the game. Laker misses on the baseline jumper. Oh, when Tombo's on him, he can go out there and get that shot, though. It can be not reacting too well. Not over him. Lang is a presence now with his spring. And, of course, they're so attentive to facing the basketball. Mutombo not really in position to catch that one. First foul on Mutombo. 12.57 left until halftime. Georgetown, 12 to 10. Morning gets a breather. One thing John will do is, is run a lot of people at you. And uh, Mike in turn doing the same thing. Trying to get everybody a little taste early. Four later. Kelly is coming to the ball game, number 40. He ran and walked on the out of bounds. He's got to stand still. No basket. Had there been a basket, he could have moved, but he had to be stationary mm -hmm. following the turnover. Brian Kelly in the ballgame. Since he tech junior. He was president of the student body there. And in fact, recruited himself at Georgetown, as I am told. The Tombo, oh, what a move on the baseline. Wow. So did he. Phil. <laughs> Recruit himself. It's kind of athleticism for a seven-footer. They, they can churn it up. Now, this sets up that stationary pivot foot out of bounds. They'll face guard, and they'll make you go over the top. You've got a screen. You just can't cut. There's the screen. Now, you got to look for the next man posting up. Now they back it off. Good job that time by Duke. You've got to concentrate continually to handle the pressure. Kubek's about to check in the ball game. Later to come back in. Thomas Hill has it partially blocked inside, and an offensive foul has been called on Palmer. And I'm not sure about that. The kid had no place to come down. I think what they did is gave the ball to George okay. instead of the foul. You're right. But that's a good no call. Palmer did not have a place to come down. That's the intensity underneath, though. You're not going to get a lob and go up alone. Kubak comes into the lineup. Greg, a senior, Clifton Park, New York. Look at these points, 12-6 as far as the front court. Moving screen as Hurley got whacked, and it's Kelly. Yeah, Kelly with the pick, and down low, Mutombo had cleared out Laker. And Christian wisely just released. Don't you know where the guy is? He usually can do some damage. Kelly's one of those type of guys at a time, you want two, three, four minutes from him, and he just, he, if you're not ignited already, he'll help do it to you. He's one of those kind of people. Turn it up a little bit. Straight up man again. Tough pass from the point. Good three-quarter. Warning. Over the top. Tag with it. In 11.53 left in the first half. Georgetown 14 and Duke 10. As tonight, of course, we are in uh, Landover, Maryland, just outside our nation's capital. Ron Franklin and Bill Raftery, second game of her doubleheader. We hope you saw the first overtime win by St. John's. They get a one-point victory over Georgia Tech. And right now, in the second game, Georgetown, number six in the nation, leading by four over number five, Duke. That's up. They did a good job. They were dead in that corner. Georgetown entices the pass to either corner, runs the trap, and then really zones up beautifully. 7-0 run. That's in the last two minutes and 38 seconds. Brian Davis with the turnover a moment ago. Junior from Capitol Heights, Maryland. Just to come into the lineup. That's three pointer. That's going to be basket interference. I don't think go for Kelly again. Okay, Alonzo very unselfish, giving it back down and then resetting. I like to see him turn when there isn't traffic and take his man. Kelly picks up his second foul. Mutombo back in and Kelly to the bench. There's the pressure again. If you don't screen and cut, of course, make them pay occasionally. Oh, double dribble. Go back in a hurry to give it back to Hurley. 
grabbed it with a second hand. Then went back down to the floor. That's Kubak's what, the one who did such a great job in the semifinal game last year of the NCAAs of, of catching Oliver Miller unaware and a couple of quick fouls and Ollie went to the bench and that was a great difference in that ball game. Uh -huh. That's why these games are helpful. You eliminate some of those mistakes. Wow. Oh. Good morning. Falling away from 18 feet. Not heaven. You say if you make that foul, you deserve it. You know, it'd be 6'4", it's one thing, but he's 6'10". Thomas Hill, the left-hander, misses on the three-point attempt. Good pass. Oh. Morning, they got to give it to him. I think the Duke player tipped it in. 18 to 10, and the Blue Devils got to get something to happen quickly, and it's a 10-point game. on the garbage points there and it's 20 to 10 Georgetown Duke not doing a good job of posting after the ball is inbounded Thomas Hill misses with another three-point attempt you notice everybody when they have an open shot there's a Georgetown player comes flying by Kubek with Mutombo a mismatch of size anyhow He walked, I thought. Yeah, Kubek's probably shoved him. The Kennedy's game is extremely simple. And I think part of it is attributable to John's experience as a center, both in college and in the NBA level. And his lack of playing experience, where you don't get in a lot of bad habits. You were able to just do certain things well. And he has surprised and will continue to. Co-defensive player of the year in the Big East just last year. School record 12 blocks. That was against St. John's where he had 12. And that ball was kicked so the clock will get a new 45. Just under 10 to play until halftime. And Georgetown all of a sudden has exploded. They're up by 10. Grant didn't really squeeze that one. Gave him another chance. Robert Churchwell. One of those bursts right now. Over the years, they can put you away in quick cadence. Duke hasn't scored in the last five minutes. It was about 14 and a half minutes on the clock. And a 15 and 0 run as that ball is turned over. And now Mike wants a timeout. Coach Krzyzewski calling him to the sideline. Georgetown by 12. You've got to set your man up, get free. Then once you catch the basketball, you've got to turn, look up the floor right here. With Bob Hurley, generally you've got a situation, if, it, if they go back to man-to-man, -to -man, he can bring it up and get set, but it's continuing. The eventual play here is when he penetrated and had that turnover, so you just don't beat it and relax. They keep coming. Harrison working against Hurley. Nice spin move. And Lakner battles Matubo inside to come back away with it. Still on the floor at Grand Hill. Oh, oh. Nothing easy. Nothing easy. That may have been on the way up, but that's a joy to watch. When guys keep reacting, help your teammate go over and try to block. And, of course, with them, it's a message, too. Don't bring it in here. That stops a 15-0 run. By the way, Bill, here's a great number. Georgetown has gotten five offensive boards in this first half, and they have scored on every occasion. <laughs> wow. Strong to the goal. Nice look here. Looking for the body contact. Didn't get it. The tumble with the intimidation that time of Laker. Poise necessary by Duke now, both defensively and offensively. Can't give up the easy goals on Gamble. Stay at home. We'll go against Churchwell. That's the kind of game, though. Get everybody down on the floor. Keep digging and scratching. Wreak havoc. Cause some decisions with the basketball. And you know, Duke, part of this month, I think, is getting your 
geared for March. Most of these clubs, anyhow. Harrison and Thompson go out. Joey Brown will check back in. Also, Lamont Morgan, a freshman out of here in Washington, comes in. Normally at the two guard spot. Uh, yeah, that's where he'll be with uh, Joey Brown already on the floor. And that was the first Duke free throw of the night. Ten point game. Tells you where the game's been played out in the middle of the floor. So early reaches around. Now Bobby right now has to gather his team. And they're going to try and take the ball out of his hands too. But defensively, he's trying to come up with the play. You don't want to do that for number three or eventually number four. But he's trying to make something happen. But he's got to use good judgment. Once they get it inbounds, recognize what kind of pressure is it man is its own. Should I pass it? Should I dribble it? Brian Kelly back in and morning goes to the bench. Grant Hill down with the rebound. Of course, his father is Calvin Hill, former great running back for the Dallas Cowboys, and he's in attendance tonight. McCaffrey pushed off with the elbow. Great step in by Kelly. I talk about being alert. Now, this is a big guy able to move his feet. If he hadn't extended the arm, he may have gotten the foul call, McCaffrey. One of the refs had a little problem with their whistle. That's why I'm out of the game. Most of them had the problem against me when I was <laughs> out there. There are a lot of coaches that wish they all had problems with whistles. Kelly on the break and Grand Hill on the block. He'll be called for the foul. You know, somebody told me before the ball game tonight, don't be surprised before it's all said and done. If Grand Hill is not back at guard and maybe even running as point guard for this Duke basketball team. Do you agree with that? Well, M Mike said he could play point. I don't think he will with this team, but he can play the off guard and push the small forward. But you did notice, just like on our open, the pressure, Duke finally had the full court pressure, but you got to score to set it up to get some turnovers and, and sort of counterpunch this Georgetown team. You can't lay back. They'll pound you into submission. Well, we mentioned Georgia. The fact that uh, Duke has only been to the free throw line one time and he missed that one. And I'll tell you, Georgetown is having their problems. They're only two of seven. Look at that push off. Good play. Learning quickly, Mutombo able to give the little nudge to extricate himself. Let's see how they handle this now, Ron. They've had their problems when they're face guarded. Everybody down this end makes it easier to trap if they know straight up man. Get it to go. Davis in and out of his hands. Good check out by Kelly. Set it up. Morgan for three. Well, look at the balance. All the blue shirts. Leitner, three point attempt. Duke has scored only two points in the last seven minutes. And they're down by 10. We're about to hit the seven minute mark. And Morning now getting a nice rest. And Tomo doing a great job. Brown with the spin move, not there. Has his own foul. Unlucky again. And Davis will come down with it for the blue double. Nice run here. Score to go. Good luck by Hurley. But Leitner giving him up and down. That's one of the few times so far that Georgetown, that Georgetown didn't recognize the sprint and balance the floor. The big guys caught unattentive and Leitner just keeps plodding along with a, at a pretty good speed, I might add. Well, for Duke, this is kind of like getting caught in a pit stop, but it's in green rather than caution because Morning is back in and Palmer has come out replacing Leitner. So. No help back here, Ron. Look at this. Nice recognition by Brown. Not bad for a freshman, huh? Emptied everybody out. The Duke pressure hugging the immediate pass recipient. And when you've got a guard, you said he picked up John's system. Turn, seal, hold. Don't shove. And make sure that pass goes towards the 10. A little late for any recovery. Great heads-up play. 
Marty has hit his first five shots. Probably the most impressive thing about him last year, 220 points from the free throw line, which was 78%. And one of the things that coaches wanted to work with him on was he gripped the ball so tightly inside. He was not necessarily getting up a good follow or return, but he was hitting the free throws. He tried to force everything in. Yeah. Davis, nice move along the baseline. Another fine look early, a little more composure there, getting the feel of the flow. You see if they go back to the big, I'd keep working morning if I could. There's a front and a back. Nice inside pass, Tomlin with the little nudge. On Sunday, it all begins with NFL game day. Chris Berman and the guys at the noon Eastern time, and then they'll wrap up the afternoon action on prime time at 7 o'clock. And our game on Sunday evening, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Miami Dolphins. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann will bring you all the action on that. All coming up this Sunday here on ESPN, the Total Sports Network. Ron Franklin and Bill Raftery in our second game here at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. First game overtime. St. John's by one over Georgia Tech. Great Tech comeback to it. They didn't look like they had a shot. Of course, making free throws, you always want to make them, but when you press, as George had, this gives them an opportunity to get organized, get people in the right spots. Got a great ball game going with 14 points and four boards. have 14 minutes. Face guard. Yeah. Straight up man. Morning has 15 points now and Duke has only scored 16 in the first half. Oh. Davis gets hammered inside and it looks like church, church well from the rear there. Oh you don't want to go in there. I mean, I, I think uh, it's awful hard to shoot but particularly if you look at this camera you can't see the basket with all those bodies. <laughs> That's housing somebody, as the kids would call it. It would be needle for that release. <laughs> what Duke's done a little bit better, Ron, is they're coming over half court and taking it towards the goal. And if there was a pinch, finding somebody. And that, and that at least has gotten them back in with their head. They were a little flustered earlier. Knocks that one down as well. Another thing that is said about Brian Davis and to watch for him as far as he could be the best defensive player that, that Duke has. Leitner in the lane. Got the deflection. Early. The Leitner, the jump hook. Not quite. The tumble comes down with the... Long carom, 540 left in the ball game, and that alley oop is not going to work. This morning was underneath the hoop trying to receive it. Pretty. Over the top, huh? It's going to be against Thomas Hill, and it's just great position inside. Went up for it, and nothing he could do because he was walled off inside. This is almost a club, Georgetown, that you have to go to the goal and kick the ball back. If you don't have the right angle where you can get some body contact and have somebody foul you, you almost better go in real and kick him back to that three-point line because you're not going to get a shot off. They just attack you in such an aggressive fashion. Duke is already in the penalty, Bill, which means 10 fouls or more for the half. So to the line goes Churchwell for a couple. We still have 531 left until the halftime. Tough, easy, uh, tough early season games, I think, tend to make you improve quickly. Coaches can teach at the highest level. We asked Mike this morning at the shoot around if, if he liked this kind of competition early, and he said, yeah. You know, we, we got to find out. We got to have a report card for ourselves, so mm -hmm. to speak. He comes away with the ball after the Duke steal. Good double up and pinch. 2 3. Thomas 
Michelle. He's got a lid on it now. Kemby, huh? And he goes over to talk to his head coach. John called him over to, to visit with him about the, the foul that he just picked up. That's the second one. Four minutes and 55 seconds left till halftime. Georgetown continuing to hold on to that 10 point lead. I'm sure Mike said to his players, look, they've given us some shot. Just maintain balance and control, relax, and then we'll make a little bit of a run. And right now, They've, they've got a shot. They can come up with some turnovers or some quick shots, or the Kemby in that case giving him the freebies at the far end. Thomas Hill, sophomore from Lancaster, Texas. Layton, great work inside, and the tip back out goes to Brown. They do it great. Joey, got to pull up, bring it back out. And you don't have to be standing still. You're going to be moving backwards in the lane. Mike Krzyzewski was very quick to say that he loves this ball club. He said, I know we're young. You know, the funny thing that he says is that, you know, they've been to the Final Four three of the last four years. He said, but we're not allowed to be young at Duke. No, I think that everyone else in the top five expects it. Leitner going strong. And it goes to follow up the walk by Lang. They're really going quickly, although Duke does have an aggressive nature. Might not be bad to pull it out just a little and run some. You know, get some guys in some position for the open jumpers. But they are really going toe to toe like punchers. They're dancing with the one who's leading, and the one who's leading is Georgetown. And this is their tempo. Mm -hmm. Well, Duke runs that high tempo too, and it starts and is stimulated at this end. Good job. Pulls those elbows out. Goes up big and strong. Great offensive rebound by Leitner earlier. Ronnie Thompson with the foul, and now the penalty situation for Georgetown. So Leitner will go to the line for a couple. Ten points. It seems like it's been that for at least eight to nine minutes. Leitner can cut into it, bring it out of double figures. There's a lot of respect between Morning and Leitner. They've teed it up. In the summer, and uh, I just think both of them have bright futures, particularly the aggressive nature of both. McCaffrey with a good job from coming outside to, to get that carom. Straight man. leader has got Kelly Knight. Be the go-to guy. Of course. And yes. And he turned around to the official after he hit it and said, foul. Now, I'm not so sure I, I don't agree with it. Good morning. Thomas Hill brings up and down, and Duke can cut it back to five on this trip. Hurley uh, tried so to feed it through Morning, and a great defensive job. So big, you can't get it around and find a passing lane. Duke tried to set the trap. Hurley gets the steal. All by. NBA giveaway. Mike Krzyzewski looking for... An intentional foul. Mike saying he didn't go for the basketball. See if he did or not. Nice little play from behind. Part of defense is deflecting. And Hurley now bracing. Now he got some ball, but he did get a lot of body. I mean, that's, you tell your players to make sure that they don't get a deuce and one. Been hit harder in the playgrounds in Jersey City. <laughs> <laughs> they come up to win a lot of games for his dad. Anton Studemeyer comes into the ball game. 
Morning, Brown, Churchwell, and number 30, Ronnie Thompson. The five of the four for the Hoyas right now. As Hurley in and out. I think what Mike likes most about his club is their toughness. And they were tested here early. Georgetown with a great assault defensively. Trying to force the issue. Matthews got himself back in, knocking okay. at the door. 3.24 left until halftime. We have a six-point ball game. Georgetown on top. We'll be right back. It's challenge. St. John's in Georgia Tech. Very exciting game that went into overtime. That and other scores and highlights as well. Back to the capstone. 28-22. Duke with full court pressure, and they back off of it. Georgetown. The steps were called. A lot of, a lot of those are dunks, aren't they? Yeah, they in are. Georgetown. Georgetown's done a nice job of involving their big guys. That time, Ronnie Thompson unable to get anything done on the baseline. Georgetown does not have a field goal in the last almost four minutes now. Well, when you press as they do, you feed off it. And right now, Duke back with composure, Hurley at the throttle. Four-point game, and it has been a game of runs. I just think it's impossible to sustain. Nice pass. That full onslaught defensively throughout the game. Oh, he got to squeeze it. Nice look, and it's a deuce. Hurley's really finding people right now and punishing. That's more like a Duke style. And, of course, John's getting guys in and out of the game, too. So you're not pressing with the same people. You don't have the same weapons. A lot of people overlook the pressure that young Bobby Hurley had on him last year to be the quarterback on that basketball team. As the drive and the lane just left wide open. And nobody made the pickup. Well, on about Morgan. McCaffrey with the Matador D. You got to bump him and force him a little wider so you can get that help. Give it time. Curley has grown up a lot, though, hasn't he? Yes, he has. I remember seeing him last year at the Final Four, and they uh, had a stomach virus on top of everything else. Thomas Hill with the hang. Couldn't get it to go. Lang follows. Look at that rebound. Leitner. Down Thompson wants steps, but a foul is going to be called. I think Morgan with the reach in, but that is a masculine oh, rebound and both these clubs are the guys who can go up with strength and in traffic and control the basketball grant hill comes back into the lineup also brian davis will check back in thomas hill and hurley will take a seat and a lot of people were saying that uh, syracuse and georgetown were really down this year <laughs> Different names, but uh, talent level as high as ever. Don't take down from what? Leitner with six points on the evening. Thirty-two twenty-six. Just under two minutes to play until the halftime. A little back screen. They get the double high, they curl off this into a pick and roll. Oh! Nice shot selection, too. Morning now with 17 points, and they get the steal right back. How about this for a heavy play? Like a guard, bring it back out. Morgan is going to be called for the foul. Yeah. All, he had to do the third was, on him. all he had to do was relax because down low, Alonzo was setting up to attack. Ronnie Thompson will come in, and about Morgan will take a seat. Our Grand Hill hasn't really played his game. I, you got to think in front of all the home folks here. And, Having grown up in this area, the Nets intimidating without Georgetown's offense. Well, they're really picking apart the half court team. Lang inside. Ron Franklin. 
along with uh, Bill Lafferty here at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. We have one away left until the halftime, but it's Georgetown. 34 to 28. Our first game tonight, overtime. St. John's winning over Georgia Tech. Tech was down big. They came back and tied it at 60 at the end of regulation. And Louie was plenty happy about that one. <laughs> Joyous. Five second half violation. Good, aggressive. Now they got the timeout. Gave him the time. Well, you could, you could see the glare from John Thompson saying, <laughs> we better not have been caught with a five second violation. Well, this is the third night of the ACC Big East Challenge, and tomorrow night there's more. Wake Forest at Villanova, 7 o'clock Eastern time, and then number 10, number 14, North Carolina and UConn. At around 9 o'clock Eastern time, Tim Brando will be there to bring you all the play-by-play, -play, along with Dick Vitale. I know you've been watching a lot of football as we listen in on uh, the Georgetown band, but... Uh... Some big, strong people going at full tilt here without any pads or helmets. A uh, little different call for you. Uh, I, you know, what it is, is so amazing is all the great games have, that have already been played in the great matchups this early on in the season. we still got three more tough months of basketball. Uh, Coming up at halftime, John Saunders talk about the top 25 scores and highlights. Jim Dalvano with the analysis on this one and also maybe a little bit more on what happened here in the first game tonight. You know, one of the surprise teams, New Durham, lost his big man going to the draft in the first round. Hester's gone, and all of a sudden, Green and Cole step up. That has turned into a running basketball team, and some people have them as one of the real surprise dream teams, maybe to make the Final Four this year. A long way from this month to then, but uh, John continues the good recruiting. We'll slip in Don Reed, six time from Largo High School. Kevin Miller, 6'7", from Memphis. So John able to get a great one. Down low. A little change now. A little 1-3-1. One, one. you got to be careful for the alley-oop. And, of course, the elbow jumper. Field goal percentages in the first half, not great for either team, Bill. A Georgetown at 40% and Duke at 35. Are they going to set it up? They might. Ooh. He's confident with that, isn't he? Kelly leans in. Nice weak side position, though. Ready? Lang will be called for the foul. If I'm not mistaken, Hurley's coming back in now, and that was his first rest. That's how valuable he is to this team. And Joe, he hasn't been out much either. The two lead, uh, leaders for these respective teams. Kelly looking for his first points of the evening. Thirty-six to twenty-eight. My guess is one, unless it's real easy. So much for that. Davis goaltending, and he'll get credit for it. Pulled the string, didn't they? Took the big guy out from the box. There's the lob then. No attention paid. See John at the top of the screen there, trying to get the number play that he wants, which is four, whatever that is. It goes spread. That's right, right. Low four corner. Nice back cut, tough pass. off to Kelly, partially blocked by Lang. And that is the end of the first half. AAA Basketball, the ACC Big East Challenge, is brought to you by Dodge. For performance, quality, safety, and value, welcome home, America. And by Bud Light, everything else is just a life. Well, we're back at the Capitol Center. There's our halftime score. Georgetown 36 and Duke 30. 
And uh, Bill Raftery, in looking back at the first half and only a six-point game, I think that really Mike has to be very pleased because I thought they were outplayed more than six points in the first half. Uh, the building in favor of Georgetown, and I think what they've done is they've gotten their legs early on. They made some mistakes, didn't really pry and grow, turned it over in bad position where they could easily give up a deuce to Georgetown. I mean, slap aways, this is the hustle. But with changes in the lineup and with the, the composure, a timeout, uh, the legs of Duke are back, and they're able to coordinate their offense, beat the pressure, and it's because Hurley has been handling the ball most of the time. And when they get into their half-court set, they've run some intricate things. They've emptied the back. All of a sudden, the fill low, McCaffrey clears out the lob. The rest simple. But that's because now their heads are in the game. They're not perplexed by that intense pressure. Halftime stats, and what do you see here, Bill? Well, the, the field goal percentage for both down, they've had some good shots. Uh, free throws, not what you'd call uh, NCAA Final Four. Uh, very competitive, and, and, and really, I just think that a, a, an even game once Duke got their legs. I thought also in that first half that turnovers and fouls were inordinately high for both teams. Mm -hmm. Grant Hill. Nice ball movement. Caffrey deep in the corner. Count the hoop and he'll go to the line. Joy Brown picks up the foul. Now, if you're a Georgetown fan, that is the typical defense. You don't get an open shot. I mean, that's hustling and scrapping. You don't like to see the foul, but there's nothing easy. Well, McCaffrey will go to the line, and here's a little bit more on that family. Of course, he plays here at Duke. His uh, sister, Monica, plays on the women's uh, team at Georgetown, and his brother, Ed, is a receiver for Stanford and, in fact, has just been named to an All-American well, team. Terrific. And the family's down. I understand they watched their daughter play tonight and had an overtime game here, so they were able to see the beginning of this ball game. Three fouls now on Brown is... He is still in the ball game, but going to have to be extremely careful as that came in the first 30 seconds of the second half. There's that little curl down. They got a five-second call because the centers were not ready to run their set. They put two on the foul line, curl one. It was warning down. He was about to be free, but uh, just too, took too long to prepare. can't get it to go. Morning battles for the ball, and then the outlet, the tumble comes up with it. That's so many clubs are going to have hustle them, aren't they? Oh. From your six-footer to your seven-tour. A little bit of a force then by Brown. You, know, you got the big guys, get them in the flow. This could cut this to a one-point ball game. It looks like Harrison has been signaled for the foul. Not too many layups against either one of these clubs, but that time you'll see six arms. If you can turn the corner, particularly with McCaffrey, if there isn't the support, you can go all the way. And if they close it off, you had McCaffrey in the corner. But you see all the attacking? Not a bad referee game, right? Ricky Crowley on top of Scagliata. Of course, I don't know if the coaches will agree with me and Bobby Donato. And not an easy game because there's so many plays that are because these bang, two bang. teams are so physical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great point. It does make it tough to call. <laughs> Two-point game, 36-34. What did that go low? Particularly when you got these people. Mm -hmm. Harrison. That's three. Now Grant Hill only had two shots. And he is a talent. He'll be a fine player. All American candidate by the time he's finished. Bill, that's the first three-pointer for either club tonight. Everything's been inside, huh? With the dribble or the pass. Caffrey took it in, reversed it out. It was a good hustle. Leitner started the problem. McCaffrey finished it off. Disruption. To 
given those singles for a lot of years now, huh? 19 full. And I don't see too many gray hairs there. I'm a little envious. John probably intimidates his own hair. <laughs> oh. We got to delay a game here. Duke slapped the basketball away. Well, he came in here years ago. The program was down. Surrounded himself with good people, stuck to his philosophy, and now controls the game almost all the time as to what you're going to run offensively. Can take you out of your rhythm, take you out of your sets. Caffrey has really maintained for Duke. He's hit six of his last seven shots. As you see, for combo. Very teachable. You think he's going to have a great career yeah. as a pro, don't I, you? I do. I do because he's going to... Doesn't have bad habits. He's going to learn, listens well. You can see the improvement and likes to play. Work ethic is good, yeah. And plus the fact there's a lot of athletic ability. All right. Not a good play. You can just see Grand Hill struggling a little bit. Not. And that's going to be Brown on a reach in, and that's number four. And I don't believe that Coach Thompson has an alternative here. I think he's going to have to sit him for a second. Mm -hmm. Well, their offense, they can maneuver, wing people to the point. It's not necessary, but you lose that cerebral approach, maybe, that a Brown gives you, where the other guys are more offensive-minded, not thinking of others. Lamont Morgan will check into the lineup, number 34. And not gotten it to Leitner much. You know, we mentioned Hill struggling, but uh, this guy not getting in position to do a whole lot of damage. Early to Grant Hill. Tipped by Leitner, won't go. Palmer over the back, and he's whistled for the foul. I don't see a whole lot of checking on. Is that four for him? That's four on Palmer, so he's going to have to sit. I don't see a lot of people setting up and digging in and making sure their opponent stays off the glass. Antonio Lang checks into the lineup, number 21. He's a freshman from Mobile. And Morney looking to set up as Lang gets one for just being new in the building. That's the second one on him. One of the things you tried to do with Lang, when he came in, they listed him at 185 pounds, and he has gained 20 pounds on that 6'8 frame since he came to school. So. Mike wants him to get a bigger body because he does have a lot of athletic ability. Well, that's unusual. Block, and it went behind the glass. Five-point game with 16 and a half minutes left to play. Look at that. Great hang, and he gets it to go. The little dipsy do under. 15 points for him now. Well, he's grown up in a year, hasn't he? Has he ever. Saw him up at the five-star camp as a counselor. Look at that, a good play right here by Morgan. I mean, tough angle, deep on the floor. Duke can make it a one-point game on this trip. Will Brown be missed? That time he was. Line battles, and that's going to be off of Duke. 15-54, left of the ball game. Our score, Georgetown, a 41, and Duke... 38. In our first game of the night went into overtime, and St. John's won it over Georgetown. This is the storyline of this one so far. Morning, 17 points, 9 boards, 2 of 7 this half, and for Duke, McCaffrey has been red hot. 15 points, Leitner with 7 points. In fact, it was interesting in our first ball game, the guy that we previewed for Georgia Tech at halftime, Kenny Anderson, was 2 of 9. At halftime, Leitner, who we promoted in this one, was 2 of 9 at halftime. Well, maybe Leitner will be a factor as Mutombo does. The completion of pretty good handling of the defense. Whistle and the foul out on the floor before the shot as Hurley 
made the drive of that left side. Anderson uh, quite a factor down the stretch of that game, but the reason Lehner isn't a factor is the great inside defense, the support, the reaction. They're taking away that end of the game, and Duke's finding other ways now, either with the dribble or with the jumper. Ooh. Three fouls on Harrison. As you can see, the alley-oop did not work inside, but Duke's still with the basketball. Nice. Good lift by Hurley, and Lang has it rejected. Well, I guess uh, return to Senda. You're not getting much in there. McCaffrey with a really solid game. Look at this reaction to the ball. Just a step the numbers. Two on one. Pretty. Robert Churchwell, the freshman from Silver Spring, Maryland. Now, I thought that would rev Georgetown's defense up, that they really come out aggressively after that completion. Nice. Later, great move. Major, move. major league. Yep. Use that bounce, ward it off the defender, turn the shoulders. He also is trying to send a message, I think, if I'm not in, in awe or intimidated by anything that has happened so far. It's only two, you know, it's only all the flair. If it's a dunk, it's two. Of course, at the other end, you might get to the foul line at a key point if you get that angle on those big guys. Morning will get a break. Mutombo will stay on the floor. Kelly is there. Also, Ronnie Thompson checks back in. And we got number 12, Harrison, who just picked up his third a moment ago. Now here's the 1-3-1, one, Ron. And we mentioned you might get an alley-oop, but the chances of that with the big guy in the middle there are tough. But you might get Kelly playing somebody a little bit, a little bit bigger. Hill misses. Lang tries in the follow, and then Mutombo comes up with the rebound. Now look at him on the floor. Right under the 10, in case there was a miss. Yeah, not, not a good shot for Christian. You know, trying to make some things happen. First time tonight we see Mike get really excited, but he's all the way down to the baseline. He didn't like the out-of-bounce call. I don't think it was a foul situation. 13-33 left of the ball game. Georgetown by seven. The high school coaches should look at a Georgetown film and then not worry so much about their offensive sets because they'll just disrupt and take you out of them. You got to be able to react. Thompson blocked by McCaffrey. Great job. Didn't want to go baseline that time. Made a mistake earlier. A big, and I don't think Mike Shashevsky recruited Bill McCaffrey to block shots, but that was a pretty good play. <laughs> Michael at Army used to tease him. Mike Kershevsky at Army made a few dollars. It's now Shashevsky. <laughs> the tumble will get a rest. It's going to be Kelly Churchwell, Morgan. Morning is back in the ball game. And it looks like Ronnie Thompson. But Tombo goes to the bench, 10 points, has nine boards. Nice post pass. He may have walked, but a good look. Killed his dribble quickly and got himself in position, but uh, you know that these two have competed against one another, and maybe that grab caused the problem. And he may have kept that pivot foot, too. I think he did. He moved the front foot a couple of times. You know, I think he's proven the point that actually maybe he's a, he's a better player facing the hoop. But on the other hand, I, I still think in his heart, he still believes he's a center. Well, I, I, from what I'm told, too, John feels he's a center. I think he's got to get some more moves. They got some things, they got a, some debris on the floor. I think he's, he, he, for example, when he can drop step, he looks good. When he has to turn and face the guy in the box, that's when he has to 
hone those moves where you step across the guy and come back with a different delivery than the jump shot, which he does continue or frequently. Brian Davis, number 23, comes back into the lineup for Duke. Hurley, Davis, McCaffrey, Thomas Hill. And who else do we have out there? And Leitner. Morgan had him covered up for us there for a second, so we couldn't couldn't tell who the fifth player was. 1258. Uh, John's arguing, ex Ron, excuse me, he's arguing now because he wants the ball on the baseline. The clock hadn't moved. Well, they got it down to 42 now. And they're going to take it out in front of John. John wanted it to set up his press down underneath. See, morning call up together to give him the defensive call. They've gotten away from the trapping beat. You notice that? They're letting the dribbler beat them. Well, of all the guys to leave open, and he's the one with the hot hand, and McCaffrey knocks it down for his 18 point. Well, they're going to have to beat him outside, but it may have to come from a pass back out. That's Duke's first three-pointer of the night. One of the few mistakes you'll see him make in traffic. Curly up to Thomas Hill. Pumps, and steps are called. Got to pass the ball back. Bobby Hurley waiting. Thomas, uh, you know, when you're inside like that, judgment should prevail, particularly when you may taste it. Turnovers now 15 each. Yeah, but they had doubled down there at your right. Hurley was there and, mm -hmm. and would have been open. Reignite. When he brought it down, it became a one-shot foul. Impressed with Georgetown's ability when there is a double up or there is a breakdown. They've been getting the ball inside much better than in recent memory. Because they've had so many talented kids that can run by their big guys and not utilize them. Although the thing probably is most impressive tonight, they, let's face it, they got a great nucleus uh, with Morning and with Tumbo inside, but six of the seven freshmen that they brought in are playing. <laughs> Look at this. But Tumbo gets whacked hard by Hill inside. Now that's something that uh, he'll have to learn. He's, that's very un-American. He assisted the official when he, he came down. But you know, I, back to the thing on freshmen, it's not just the fact that they're freshmen. They are playing not only as good players, but with a fair amount of maturity for this early on. Well, the one thing we've seen because of international play in the AAU leagues during the course of the summer, the kids have upwards to 100 basketball games. They're much more adept at handling this kind of atmosphere. Offensive player Akeem Olajuwon is. Oh, and yeah. was at Houston undergrad, but he uh, still reminds me of Akeem in a lot of ways as far as the early days of Akeem Olajuwon. That's unusual. But four blue shirts underneath. Point game, Leitner gets the steal. Nice. McCaffrey fanned out, open the lane, Hurley response. Every time Georgetown thinks they're going to put together a run, Duke will not go away. Unabashed. Harrison. Wow. Only a freshman also, son of Washington, Archbishop Carroll. Nice shooter. Now Leitner all the way down was eyed by Hurley. Now look at this. Smart. Now he's got the angle. Sort of a crooked arm release by Christian. Ten rebounds now for Mutombo as he pulled that one down. 51 to 45. And we're about to go to 10 minutes left in this ball game.
go to the 10. And he picked that up quickly. He learned that as fast as he found out where the fast food places were. Go to the 10. And we may have three NBA centers on the floor. I'm sure we do. Christian Leitner a little bit tired and winded from competing against two potential NBA centers, Mutombo and Morty. Look at the, the support. Grand Hill blocked as he drove it along the baseline. They got the push on Alonso. Second foul on Morty. You can see Mike looks a little bit gaunt in the face there after his bout with pneumonia. And he's lost close to 15. This game would do it to you without being sick. Mike Bray alongside him there trying to support. 10-17 left to play. Georgetown by eight. Well, tonight it's just outside of our nation's capital. Of course, we're in Landover, Maryland. But a beautiful and crisp cold night in Washington, D.C. tonight. But very warm at the inside. Our first game tonight, overtime. Georgia Tech fell to Louis Karnaseka's St. John's Redmond by one point. And in this one, we have an eight-point contest. Georgetown, the number six team in the nation, leading over Duke, who's number five. And we have just over ten to play in the ball game. Uh, Georgetown, after the timeout, trying to get into their press again. Straight up man. And earlier, remember they did it in traffic. Got two out of their rhythm. Ron Franklin along with Bill Raftery. I hope you're enjoying this doubleheader tonight. Evening number three, the ACC Big East Challenge. And there's still one more night of it to come tomorrow evening. Dick Vitale and Tim Brando will bring that to you. Tough shot. Boy, is he confident anymore. Now that's a good shot when you're getting your shots blocked or changed or hurried. Matamo leaving the ball. Isn't that interesting how fast people oops, get it off the floor? You become 5'10". Yeah, he's got a John saying pass it. That's right. He said to Kimby, he slapped his hand. He said pass it. Basketball coming up on Saturday. Kansas against Kentucky. The Wildcats number 25 of the nation. That's 7.30 Eastern time. And then Arkansas at Missouri. Second game to follow. Nolan Richardson has really got the Razorbacks off and running. No pun intended. They are fun to watch. Is that a three? That could be a three-shot foul. Let's see if it was over the line. On the three-point attempt. No, it was on the line. So he'll go to the line for a couple. Foul situation. Georgetown is one away from the one and one. And Duke is a couple away. Can't play too long without Christian. He needed a blow, Mike. You have to time out. A few minutes extra. Need those fresh legs against the strength of morning and, of course, the agility of Mutombo. Look at how much Brown means defensively, too, Ron. He's been out of there quite a while. Saves him before. He stirs it up. Harrison's done a very good job. He's got nine points. Thomas Hill. Boy, I'll tell you, that shot just has not gone for him all night. Great look away, and it'll have a chance for three. Leitner gamble on the defensive end and trailed the play, so it's five against four. Davis coming in late as well, so five against three. And John's early substituting showing some signs right now, particularly on that play. You know, and I go back to the point I made in the first half on this jump. Out of Cincinnati, Cincinnati Tech, Ryan Kelly. What he does is very infectious. Mm -hmm. He just wants to play. Doesn't necessarily have to have the basketball. He just wants to be out there to contribute. He doesn't have to read the paper about himself. Biggest lead of the night, 13 points. 
58-45 by Georgetown. Churchwell with the foul, but good to see Grant Hill being more offensive-minded. Churchwell now with four. You can see that casual glance down at the bench. You know, at the five-star camp a couple of years ago, I was fortunate to present Grant Hill with the MVP trophy and speak at a dinner with his dad and get to chat about him with a great There's player and person. Great that's gonna, player at the, for the Dallas Cowboys and also from Yale. I bet that's a little harder to do, watch your son play in Ruth than get hit by some of those demons in the NFL. Is, uh, Mike's work ethic. I'd say he had more than enough huh? shoulder, neck, and uh, that what me look, but uh, he is a competitor. What you like about him, I mean, he really chastises his teammates in a nice way, keeps their spirits up, and he's uh, articulating with Mickey Crowley. The injustice he's just received. Interesting thing about Lakers, he's second on the team in three pointers. And the fact that 37 points he had uh, just last week was the most points scored by a Duke player since uh, Ferry. Mm. And they've had a few. There's some uniforms he's on Sick Road, Johnny Dawkins, Mike Jaminski, Art Heyman, and you mentioned Ferry. And someday Jim Spinarco, who led him to that final four, will be in there. He deserves it. Will they retire that shirt? Early for three. Morning has been whistled for the foul. That'll be three on him. You have to like it, though. He was fighting to get over the top, so Leitner couldn't receive that post pass and cause some damage. This is the home gym, the floor, I should say, of uh, Georgetown. Georgetown was very glad to be playing the second game tonight because normally they have a boys club coming to play before them, and the reason for that is because the floor is on ice, and they say it loosens up the board and you get a more even dribble. So they were glad to be playing game two this evening. They think of everything. Yeah. Marty got him. Leitner came a little too deep, really positioned well. Davis. Well, that's that giveaway. I like the play. Take another look. Good look, and of course, you do not want the easy layup and a little frustration too as Kelly and of course the officials with tough jobs making sure there's full control. I think what Davis got upset about is he had one hand on the ball and one hand on his head but and blocked both. I can't blame the guy for being upset but that is part of yes. not giving up a layup. Mike's getting a T. Well, even though he's not feeling well, don't forget, the second one, you're gone. And usually with the first one, you sometimes feel you don't deserve it. Mike Bray and Pete Gaudet coming up. Because Pete's been with him for a long time. And trying to get him to relax a little. So I don't know why officials stand there after they call the T. I'd be on the other side chatting with us. It's almost like looking for the second one. Some morning now to 
shoot the two on the technical. Uh, Brian Davis upset. Mike, of course, trying to stir his guys up, too. Right now, it's in danger of sneaking away. points and nine rebounds for morning. There's the bench T. Gives him the easy two. Let's go, look! Thompson's three-pointer won't go, and here comes Earl. Bobby all the way. Showing some speed there. But Georgetown really has spread the floor nicely on offense. There's plenty of area to make the post pass and hand it up in the corner jumper. That's Hurley's first field goal of the night. Maybe Davis there. Brian riding his guy. This has postseason feelings, doesn't it? The competition level. Morning will go out and the couple will come back in. You know, there have been some great ones already. Arkansas and Arizona is great over Arkansas and Duke. Mm -hmm. uh, Indiana and Syracuse. Yes. And Arkansas and Arizona. Right. A little bump here. Because that preseason NIT ended up with some four heavyweights in the finals. Well, the thing is, a lot of clubs finding out very early, and particularly some folks who were, as you mentioned, some teams that are supposed to be, like, not necessarily reloading, but, you know, it is a, it's a rebuilding mm -hmm. year. And they're not rebuilding, they have reloaded. Well, one constant that uh, these two clubs have is defense. I mean, you know each night what you're bringing to the arena. And it's how they cope against one another, particularly tonight. And early on, the inside defense from Jerusalem, complemented by the early pressure set up this game, I think. 64-51 with 7.26 left in the ball game. Curly gets some both, so we'll take a break. Georgetown leading by 12. 52 left of the ball game with just under seven and a half minutes. A Georgetown just uh, every time Duke gets closer, won't let it happen. Well, they really need some big games. Leitner inside. Of course, Grant Hill didn't play as well as they're used to, but uh, this interior defense of Georgetown, Ron, is just devastating. Look at those numbers. Not as many blocks as I've seen him have, but uh, just how many hurries and how many intimidations. They did it all here of late with Joey Brown resting. Steal by Davis. And a little show time. Before that shot, Duke was shooting only 35% for the ball game. Attributable to just what Bill was talking about, the, the defense of Georgetown. Joey Brown back in the game after having been sitting for a bit with his fourth foul early. And that ends a 6 nothing Duke run since a technical foul. Clayton oh. lost the handle on that. About to make a nice move, just didn't get the right release. They begun sliding that pick and roll. And the <laughs> Joey Brown didn't matter, right? Or he got right back on him. Switching to D now, little two three. Christian Leitner with a jump up. Oh, and Dutumbo with a cramp. Leitner with 13 points. It's five of 18 on the evening as you look at uh, Dutumbo. Laurie Michaels, mm -hmm. the trainer for Georgetown, is out. 
check him out. They, I think it's a cramp. Let's see the way she's working the leg. But you got to move the toes when you get those cramps. I know you wouldn't have that problem. You're in such good shape. <laughs> Right here, this is a much better looking hook. Well, he just came down a little bit funny. I mean, he's stiff leg, but oh, he just yeah, fell yeah. again. Yeah, that's a cramp. My, he just fell down again. Oh, that's, that's amazing. That, I've never seen that. Well, when a cramp grabs you like that, that's. We well, got up, and Lori Michael had, had walked away. Yeah. Numbers on him tonight, he's got 14 points, 13 boards, and two blocks. Well, coming up tomorrow, Wake Forest at Villanova, 7 o'clock Eastern time as the ACC Big East Challenge continues. And then the second game to follow, North Carolina against UConn. All of that tomorrow evening, the doubleheader of the ACC Big East Challenge. Now they're afraid to let him up again, and that's a long way to go down. Uh, Lori like had just turned and started walking yeah. toward the bench, and she heard him go back to the floor. And of course, that's like a big old tree coming down. She. He played against his older brother in Southern Indiana. I guess one of the reasons that that game was uh, scheduled. His brother is uh, Elo Mutambu. And he uh, outscored it can be 12 to 6 but in block shots uh, it can be won that 5 to 0 and that's the longest he has stayed still on the defensive end right there and we're making light because we think it's something minor and hopefully he's well, he's still riding in pain well sports center is coming up immediately following the game Chris Berman and Dan Patrick the Blue Jays and the Padres with a big trade and also the announcement of the Outland Trophy winner. Well we've almost run the gamut. We've had one of everything here tonight. We had an overtime game in our first action here at the Capitol Center. St. John's won that one by one over Georgia Tech. And in the second game, Georgetown has this one in hand, leading by 12 with 5.52 to play. And Lori looking for some assistance. Oh, they're going to, oh my goodness. They're going to make sure. Well, as they bring out the chair for the Tombo. This is what happened on, on Monday evening. Virginia by four over Pittsburgh. Stith with a great outing. Boston College by 15, defeating Maryland. Abram with 30 points in that. Then on Tuesday night, the hair, 25 points in uh, Seton Hall, wins by 16 over Clemson. And Syracuse holds off North Carolina State last night. Johnson led the way with 24 points. Now they're loading the big fella onto the rolling chair. And they're really careful with it. That may be a little more serious than we first thought. And Lurie as well, because he's, when she walked away, I'm sure she felt he was fine. But he's not taking any chances now. I just moved the leg up pretty good, I said. Pretty nice on that leg, and we're hoping that it is only a cramp. Yeah, certainly do. It's really a pleasure to watch. Georgetown led only 49 to 45 with 11:40 to go in the ball game, and since then they have gone on a 13 to 1 run and widened the margin out to 16 points. Right now it's a 12 with 5:52 remaining. Well, they really didn't need that at that point. Looking for the home run. Was Duke fronted everybody, played the inbound passer, and uh, that's the gamble. If it works, you look pretty good. He's staying on the court, I by the way. I started to say yeah. this is even better news. Maybe it is just a cramp. They just had to have some way of getting him off the floor. 7-2. Mm -hmm. For fear, right, that yeah. he might fall again. A little zone to make Duke take the deep shot, use some clock as well. Joey Brown. Inside the morning, working against.
Mitch Leitner. Nice look along the baseline, and Leitner comes off morning and makes the block. Churchill is very active, isn't he? That's a charge. Brown with number five. It's going to be five on him. So he got the fourth early. He's set, and he's been back in the ball game for about two and a half minutes. And those four points belie his contributions. Solid effort, particularly in the pressing end and getting the team into that fast-paced style. Charlie Harrison, the freshman from Washington, will come in replacing Joey Brown. Joey, a freshman from Morgan City, Louisiana. And Grant forcing it. He really isn't stroking it. Oh, that's more like it, though. But look at that defensive set. I mean, you've got everything you'd want. Huh? Take the dribble away. Force the pass back out. Now, Ron, this is awfully tough. Now, look, you think you have a shot. There's Morning. Well, let me get it back out. And, of course, Dave is strong, and that was over the 10, I guess, but that was still on the way up. That was impressive. Good, and he'll go to the line. Duke's got to stimulate something from the deep. A little takedown by Kelly Lehner. A little get acquainted poke. Nine-point ball game at 425 left. And the tumble's up, by the way, Ron. Good help by Leitner. Well, that's a perfect double of backcourt. Anytime you dribble exchange like that, you're bringing your man as well as the other defensive man together for a perfect trap close the turnover at nine. John's not going to be happy about that total. That's 20 turnovers against Georgetown. This team keeps plugging. Davis gets the foul, and that's going to be a foul on the quarterback against Thompson. Ronnie Thompson will pick up his second. Now, Leitner not shooting the ball as well as he's capable of, but good weak side rebounding bailed them out on this play. But they're just hanging around in Georgetown, not closing it on them. Who hung around in the first game? <laughs> yeah, in overtime. Is that true? Georgia. Tech, and look who's coming back. And boy, that's great to see. It can be. Well, he was walking like he wanted to go onto the scorer's <laughs> table, and, uh, and John looked at him and have to say, I'm still coaching this yeah. Where are you going, guys? Yes, huh? <laughs> this is where Brown is important. 7-0 run by Duke, and it is a seven-point game with about four minutes left in this contest. And Charles Harrison has to take over a little bit. Morning inside to Kelly, and he gets blocked big time. So there's a break in the action, 3.51 left to play, and the folks from Duke are aroused. They're making a heck of a bounce pass, pass, and you get the reaction defensively. Both clubs terrific at helping one another. And Grant Hill, the only thing he did wrong was didn't keep it in play, but uh, 
He enjoyed that after some frustrating moments to see him. You know, Davis has helped pace this Duke comeback. He's got seven of the last nine points. 68-61. Seven-point Georgetown lead. Nice morning. Yes. Nice look. He's got it and a chance for a three-point play. He has made two beautiful passes in a row. They empty out that backside initially in case you want to front the big guy. And if you can get it in, then they fill. Here's the fill coming. And just look at this. The recognition and Bobby Hurley getting spun around because just like they've been taught, they're going to help one another. so much practice really did not become a part of their rotation and you think he's going to be awfully good he's out of Portland Oregon played at Jesuit high school there all you read about him was uh, he would be a help this year and surprisingly he didn't get the early minutes Hurley showed some great speed did he turn we talked about Anderson in the first game yeah Bobby can scoot get him up and down with the bounce you know besides that he is not afraid to take it into the trees either this team it's awful tough to get away with it though I don't know why McCaffrey's helping him. Should be a five second. Uh, Fran shouldn't have picked the basketball up. Or Billy, excuse me, because they had started the count. He was trying to help the opponent. Got to cut and help the guy passing the ball inbounds. Kelly comes back in. Studemeyer will go to the bench. 3.35 left in the ball game. Laker has it stripped, gets it right back. Grant Hill was there and just missed the shot. And Davis is going to be called for the violation. That's four on him. Mike is probably one that I've never seen my club get that many shots that close and come up empty, but there's always a big body and, of course, a reacting person off the ball. It's just extraordinary. That he has not done properly this evening. Lonzo Morning, the junior from Chesapeake, Virginia, played at Indian River. 6'10, 240 pounds, and he moves with the grace of a 6'6 player. This, this is one of the better games I've seen him play. And I've seen him play in some awfully good ones. The maturity factor continues to, to grow large, doesn't it? Well, also, with, with the uh, kids around, he knows he has to play a little better because of the young people that you've alluded to. Shevsky is up 
And I have a feeling what he said was it should have been a, it should have been good in the goal yeah, yeah. way back there, yeah, right that, there. But it's awfully tough when you every time you go in, you see the sultans of SWAT, but the, compet the competitors involved in this game. I mean, it's just beautiful. Two well drilled talented clubs that are going to be around a long time. Christian with his 14th point of the night. He's not going to be very happy with what happened on the floor tonight, though. 5 of 22 in field goals. Nice double up. Dudemeyer tried to throw it right through the cap. Put it on the floor. Nice no look. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the block by morning. Good heavens. You know what's terrific, though, Ron? There's a play, it's blocked, and then there's people reacting to go make another great play. It's just one continuing change of events. Well, this is strength on strength, great timing, and all basketball. That is gorgeous. And you're right, you see the reaction. He's going right back to try to make another one. <laughs> and they are into it. Morning has four blocks. As Davis knocks down the first one. 2.29 to play. Georgetown by nine. John's really taking care of the Kimby, too, not taking any chances there. That's the first miss by Davis tonight. Eight of nine. Everybody wants a back court, but it's fine. It was straddle. Good John thought to get it out. Where's confidence? Stiedemeyer saying he's just picked up the foul. I've got a turnover. I need you to do something to impress the big guy behind me there. As Hurley goes the distance, count it, and the foul. Okay, Bobby doesn't back off, does he? He's not afraid to mix, stick the chin in. Had the choice here. But look, Ian Titcher, you mentioned before, these guys going back, they don't undeter. They don't. Mike said this afternoon, we don't care if they dunk or block shots. We're keep, we just keep going after them. Bobby's only six feet, 160 pounds. Number five for Church a pretty 12. good prospect, huh, Robert? So he's gone. He has 11 points on the ball game. Forget Sunday NFL game day that starts it off at noon Eastern time. Then they'll come back with NFL prime time at seven Eastern time. And the game that you'll see here on ESPN, the Total Sports Network, eight o'clock Philadelphia against the Miami Dolphins. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann will bring you all the action. Brother Danny signed at uh, Seton Hall in early signing. So PJ will have some leadership out there. Georgetown. I mentioned a moment ago that they had 20. They're winning the game handily, but the turnovers John will not be pleased with. Kelly comes down with the board there, trying to help stop the bleeding. 23 turnovers against Georgetown. You've got to make good gambles, trap where you can. Just try and play the passing lanes. Because Georgetown trying to play a little keep away. Run it down. There's a perfect trap, and it works. Don't exchange. Don't come behind your teammate. Harrison got pushed out of bounds for the 24th turnover. Georgetown by eight. Trying to get the carefree into the flow. Said quickly, uh, John Thompson needs the time. 101 left in the ball game, and Duke trying to do what Georgia Tech did in the first game, send it to overtime. Down by six, and Duke has the basketball. What are the other situations that are left? Timeouts. Georgetown one, Duke two. Fouls to give, need a 
club can give any because they're in the penalty. And the possession error goes with Duke. And Mutombo is back in the ball game. 14 points. <laughs> they have put him back in. Uh, obviously, when he got up, they felt comfortable with him, or they wouldn't put him back in. See what George said. They go man to man. I hope they might pull a little wrinkle and switch it up. Turnovers this half. Georgetown 15 and Duke 3. Utama really becomes a presence at this point. Any penetration. That's what the... And I love that. End of it. Get it in and kick it back. It negates that inside defense. It is a three-point ball game with 49.9 seconds left. And the first one tonight, what Georgia did you Tech expect? came from <laughs> off the track and sent it into overtime at 60 apiece. And, Bill, we're heading to the same thing right here. Uh, Mike Riley, I think John wishes you could put him in. Pretty good player for him. In the old days, Joey Brown out. That's a problem for him. They haven't really had that control. The best passer was Morning, and there's a guy that uh, has his jam inside out. Well, Sports Center is coming up immediately following the ball game. Chris Berman and Dan Patrick. The Blue Jays and the Padres with a tray, and also NBA highlights. And a lot more coming up on Sports Center immediately following the ball game. Well, here, here's a 45 seconds on the shot clock when they get it. 49 left in the game. Uh, John's going to have to run something effectively. They haven't shown they can hold the ball. I'm sure he's plotting on don't bring your man in to a perfect trap situation. We've lost the ball twice. Uh, John, you can tell the age of the coach. When they use the floor like that, that's my vintage. You know, they, didn't have, they didn't have all these fancy magnetic boards when we began. Of course, this pressure has started to give some problems to Georgetown. Duke has made up eight points in the last minute and 15 seconds. An 8 0 run. Run the trap. Laker will get the foul. Four on him. Don't get the first one. Give it was the advice there. Mike Shashevsky, always coaching, always giving instruction. We're in only 50 percent. We only had a few this year from the free throw line, but. Uh, you can extend the game. It was a guy that coached at North Carolina State that did this in the Final Four. Gave some fouls and won a national championship. In Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> Jimmy Lee. Lee. They got a lane violation. I believe Morning may have stepped in. 46.8 seconds left. Georgetown by three, and Duke has the basketball back following the lane violation. McCaffrey or Leitner. And Hill's been very quiet, don't forget. Battle inside and the follow. Davis put it up. Let's see if they give a goal to him. No. Good, pretty good block, but these officials have been right on top of things. Mike not real happy with some of the. Mike wants. <laughs> I can't blame him for asking, but they are just above the tin. Kelly will foul out with that one. I believe the foul was on him, wasn't it? That's what they pointed to. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah, going to be fouled on him. I do change it up a little bit on their pressure the last time. They had a safety valve guy. Remember earlier, they had they matched up everybody on the inbounds pass and let them throw the home run. You may see them change that look again, hoping for Georgetown to throw one awry. Kelly is still on the floor. They're checking with the official score, but they've got five, we've got five. Kenby. I think we're just giving him the 30 seconds.
generally wears a, a knee brace on both knees, but the one on the right leg he does not have back up. I don't know if it was hurting him with circulation that would uh, cause the cramp or what. Davis, 16 points, six rebounds, eight of nine at the free throw line. Two-point game, just under 30 seconds to play. Using the second pass against the pressure, that's the big one. Timeout is called. No, no timeout, I beg your pardon. Yeah, they're just subbing, I think. Yeah. Both teams with one timeout, that's it. I think I'm McCaffrey as the infielder. Everybody matched up, but not playing the inbounds passer. There's the first. Ooh, they had a perfect trap situation. Leitner whistled for the foul, and that's all for him. Didn't quite get over and step on the sideline. Lakers said I've only got four. points and 13 rebounds. He did not back off at all. He had to play Warney and of course to Kemby as well. Front and back. Uh, I mentioned earlier three centers will move on at some point in their careers and I love Leighton's analysis too of his career. Tell those pro guys to leave me alone. I'm going to enjoy my senior year and just play. Don't bother coming around. Crawford Palmer, 6'9", junior from Arlington, Virginia. will come in the lineup replacing him. What a huge free throw here. And Harrison walks up like he's been doing it all his life. Well, maybe he has, but not in college. A Grand Hill now becomes the sort of three or four man with Leighton around. He's going to have to do some things. And, of course, Curley's penetration in McCaffrey setting up. So I think it'll be McCaffrey and or Hill. Boy, Harrison perfect at the line tonight. It's a three-point Georgetown lead. Now, Fran, er, Billy, Billy's got to set his man up and make a strong cut to get free. <laughs> Davis drives into the middle, and the shot is blocked by Morning. Or is that the story of the evening as Bobby Hurley gives it to stop the clock? You come close, be ready. It's coming back. He's got a cramp too, it looks like. Hurley with four fouls. Well, you can win games a lot of ways, but uh, this Georgetown team does not let you get the easy one. There's a presence, whether it's the big A, Alonzo, or Dikembe, Mutombo, you do not get a chippy. They are impressive. Alonzo with five blocks in the line. Thompson makes it a four-point game with nine and a half seconds left. That's his first point. Thing here is the two possession situation. Early can't get it to go. Stidemeyer is going to go to the line as McCaffrey fouled him, and this one will go in the books. Two and a half seconds left. This early, this tough, a joy. I, mean, I, I thoroughly sat back and was regaled by the hearts and the high level of competition. Mm. Now, John doesn't like it, but I know he enjoyed this effort. He doesn't like playing this particular challenge. But to have an effort like this has got to make him feel awfully good. First, Mike, the back retool, they're going to be awfully good as well. Uh, 
So Georgetown wins it 79 to 74. And Billy, you make the point as now Brown is down in front of us with the, is that Brown? With another cramp. So the heat in this building seems to have gotten to the players a little bit, but not to the point that Georgetown could not go in front and for the most part stay there for the heat. Well, the heat was on all evening long. John's pressure early got them off to a good start, but Duke showing the heart of champions coming back. But uh, once again, Big John Thompson will be tough to cope with when it comes short of a time. Georgetown 79 and Duke 74. So it is the Big East taking both games here in Landover tonight.